Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. Alrighty, uh, let's get into our homework for lesson 8.1.3. Our M&Ms for this homework had to do with circle vocabulary, and we're going to be getting more into uh, circles and finding uh, diameters and areas of circles and other complex shapes in Chapter 9. Um, so let's make sure we understand the basics of the circle. First of all, a circle is this collection of points that are all the same distance away from a center point. So the measure of that is called the circumference, which we'll get more into later. Uh, but it is actually the circle is not the space in between. The circle is this collection of points. And all of these points are all the same distance away from a center point. So the measure of the distance from the center point to the circle is what we refer to as the radius. And there would be an infinite number of radii that we could put around this circle because the number of points that make up the circle is also infinite. Now, um, a chord is different from a radius. While the radius has two endpoints, one of them is at the center of the circle, the other one is on the circle itself, or I should say the center point. Um, the other endpoint is on the circle itself. Well, with a chord, two points are both on the circle. So any chord would have endpoints on the circle itself. So the radius is not an example of a chord. The diameter is a very special chord in that it is the longest possible chord that you can get on a circle because the radius, or I'm sorry, the diameter passes through the center point here. So at its widest point, this chord is the diameter. The diameter also happens to be what you get when you take two radii, put them end to end, they would form the diameter. Okay, so there is a special formula for us to pay attention to here where the diameter is equal to two radii, and a radius is equal to one half of the diameter. There is no specific formula for chords because uh, there are an infinite number of chords you can put around here with an infinite number of, si of lengths. Okay, so we're not going to focus on any particular length of a chord until you get into high school and you get into a much, much higher level of math than what we are going to be focusing on here. All right, so draw angles that approximate each following measures. So a 50-degree angle is going to be, if you think of what a 90-degree angle would be and what a 45-degree angle would be, it would be a little bit wider than 45 degrees. A 170-degree angle would be like a straight angle, and it was a little bit uh, smaller than the straight angle. So picture what 10 degrees would look like and then kind of raise that up. 190 degree angle would be kind of this inverted, right? If you went just 10 degrees beyond 180, this part, while while this is 170, this part over here would be 190 because the two of them combined are going to add up to 360 total degrees. And then 270 degree angle would be you got your 90 degrees on this side, so the rest of it has to be 270 degrees. Uh, use a straight edge to draw a triangle on your paper. Estimate a measure of each angle in your triangle. Okay, so you could have made any triangle you wanted. Uh, I made one that looked like this, and I estimate the uh, different angles, or maybe we measure. I wonder how accurate I got those measurements. Does this look like it's 123 degrees? Yep, yeah, looks pretty close. Um, I'll just trust I got the other ones right. I won't bore you by measuring them. But we do know one thing for sure. All three of these angles, when added together, have to add up to 180 degrees because that's the nature of triangles. All triangles, the sum of the angles is always 180 degrees. All right, uh, now what do we have to do here? Uh, read the math notes and then find the length of the radius and the diameter of each of the following circles. All right, so remember what we said. 
with the math notes. The diameter is always going to be two times the radius, and the radius is always going to be half of whatever the diameter is. So here we've got the radius measure. That's three, so we'll double it to make the diameter of six. This is the diameter measure, so we'll take half of that, and that'll be the radius. This is the radius measure, and so when we double it, we've got the diameter. This is really important, by the way, to know the difference between the radius and the diameter because when we find the area of a circle, we're going to need to know the radius. We can use this formula. And when we need to find the circumference of the circle, we're going to need to know the diameter. And so there will be times when they give you the radius, but you've got to find the circumference. So you've got to double this and then multiply it times pi. Or, like in this case, if you want to find the area, you're going to have to take half the diameter, which is 1.5, square it, and then multiply times pi. All right. Tino works at a retail clothing store as a sales clerk, and put it, uh, part of his paycheck is based on commission, meaning that it is determined by the value of the clothes that he sells. So if he sells, if he's a great salesperson and sells lots and lots of clothes, he's going to get a percent of all the clothes that he sells. So instead of just standing around for a few hours making an hourly wage, he's now motivated to sell clothes to the customers that come into the store so that the uh, business makes money too. So each week here in $7 an hour plus 15% of his total sales. If Tina worked 18 hours and sold $538 in clothes, what would he make for the week? We've got to figure out his commission. We've got to figure out how much he's going to make total, 7 times 18, and then we put it all together. So the commission is 15%. So our multiplier will be 0.15. This would be a situation where you would not multiply it times 1.15 because we're not he's not going to make the $538 plus the extra 15%. He's just making 15%. We've, we've got to figure out what is 15% of 538. So we'll take 15.15. Now, what is that? When did the, how did that number get in there? Um, what is that? 0.15 times 538 is how we get our $80.70. So he's going to make this money because of all the clothes that he sold. And then his hourly, which is $18, $7 per hour times 18 is 126 When you add those together, his weekly paycheck, or his paycheck for this week is $206.70. Uh, in a recent survey for the student council, Dominic found that 150 out of the uh, 800 students on campus did not like soda. If half the student body was going to attend a dance, that would be 400 students, right? Are going to attend if that's half. Then how many students would she expect to want soda? So if the ratio is 150 uh, do not like soda, that means that the rest of them do which would be 650, because 150 plus 650 is the 800 total. So we need to base this proportion on the amount that want soda, because she's going to buy soda, right? So if you take half of that, your giant one, take half of 800 to get you 400, we would want to take half of 650, which would be 325. So we're going to expect 325 students attending this dance will want to have soda. I'll better order that number of sodas. All right, and then we find the value of each of the, uh, each variable and the following figures. Do not use the protractor. Use the properties of angles. So one thing that I mentioned before in the lesson that I want to mention again is CPM is notorious for drawing diagrams that don't actually match the true measurements. Okay, so it says 37 degrees here, but may not be 37 degrees. So you don't want to go ahead and measure this using a protractor. Just understand that this is a right angle, and these two angles are complementary, so that means that they have to add up to 50, uh, uh, 90. So we would take the 90 minus the 37 that we know, and that means that the other one has to be 53 degrees. These two are supplementary, so that means you're going to take 180 and subtract away 85, get you the missing angle, which is 95 degrees. These are vertical, so you don't have to do anything other than know that they are equal to each other. These are supplementary, so 180 minus 137 is 43. 
These are complementary, so 90 minus 15 is 75. These two are adjacent angles, which makes them supplementary. Adjacent angles of two lines that intersect each other are always going to form that straight angle, right? Because that's a straight line. So they have to be supplementary. And if those are supplementary, that means that these are supplementary as well, and these are supplementary as well. So if I know this is one, oh, stop it. Do I really want to do that? I didn't want to do that. Um, let me actually go like this. Okay, so if that's 153, this has to be 153. And if this is 153, then this has to be 180 minus 153, which is 27. And if they wanted us to find this one, we could have found that one as well. These two have to be 27. Those two have to be 153. These are vertical angles. These are supplementary angles. Uh, that's a straight line, which makes these supplementary. So 180 minus 115 is 65. And same, this one looks like the same one as up here. Yeah, it's just inverted. So this is 85, while that one was 95. And we are done. Hooray. All right, let's move on. Take care. Bye. Hey, feeling good, like I should, when it